Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we will learn how to perform the following tasks in Python. We will learn number one, how to define a transfer function of a control system, number two, how to simulate the step response of a transfer function, number three, how to simulate the initial state response of a transfer function, number four, how to simulate the response of a transfer function to arbitrary control inputs. This tutorial is based on the Python control systems library. But before I start with the explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial as well as more than 450 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. The first step is to install the Python control systems library. So open your command prompt or the anaconda command prompt if you're using anaconda and type pip install control. As you can see over here, in my case, all the requirements are already satisfied. This is because I have already installed this library. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress over here. Okay, let's start with Python coding. To make this video tutorial as short as possible, over here I will paste a piece of code that I wrote previously. First, we need to import the plotting function. Then, I need to import the control systems library. It's a standard convention to import the control systems library as CT. Next, I need to import the NumPy library. Over here, I wrote a small function that will help me to plot the step responses and initial state responses. Let us briefly explain this function. This function is used to generate a step response graph shown over here. The first input of this function is x-axis vector. This is the time vector. The second input is y-axis vector. This is the response vector that is plotted on the y-axis. Title string is the title of the plot. In this case, it's step response. String x-axis is the x-axis label. In this case, time s. String y-axis is the y-axis label. In this case, output. And string file name is the name of the file for saving the plot. Usually, I specify PNG or JPG files. Over here, we specify the figure size. Over here, we generate the actual plot. We specify the color of the line and we specify the line width. Over here, we set the title and set the font size. Over here, we set the X label, Y label. Then over here, we adjust the label size, that is the size of these numbers over here. Then we plot the grid and finally we save the file and we generate the plot. That's it. Next, let's explain how transfer functions are defined in Python control systems library. Here is a generic form of a transfer function. S is the Laplace complex variable and AN, AN minus 1 until A1 and A0 as well as BM, BM minus 1 until B1 and B0 are the coefficients of the transfer function. To define the transfer function, we use the function ct.tf. Over here, num and den are two Python lists defining the coefficients in the numerator and the denominator of the transfer function. The first entries of the two lists are the coefficients with the largest indices, and the entries are ordered in the descending order. For example, in the case of this generic transfer function, the lists take the following forms. Num is the list that consists of all the coefficients in the numerator, and then is a list that consists of all the coefficients in the denominator. The coefficients start with the coefficient that has the largest index. In this case, that is in the case of the numerator, 
it is Bn, then the next one is Bn minus 1, and until B0. Similarly, the then list starts with An, then the next one is An minus 1, until A0. For example, let's consider this transfer function. The Python code defining this function is given over here. First of all, we need to define the list corresponding to the coefficients in the numerator. This list looks like this, 2, 2, 4, 4. Then we need to define a list that takes into account all the coefficients in the denominator. The entries of this list are 1, 2, 4. And over here we define the transfer function, num then, and we print the transfer function. Next, let's implement this transfer function in Python. First, the list called num, it is 2, 4. Then the list then, it is 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 4. Here's our transfer function, ct.tf. And over here, we specify numerator, comma, denominator. Okay, let's do that. And finally, let's print our transfer function. Here it is. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to simulate the step response of the transfer function. The first step is to define the time vector. Let's do that. Time vector is equal to. To define the time vector, let's use the lean space function. We start from 0 until 5 seconds, and in between, we will have 100 steps. To simulate the step response, we need to use the function ct.stepResponse. The first input argument of this function is our transfer function, and the second one is the time vector. This function will return two alpha. The first output that I call time returned is the time vector or time array used for simulation. And the second output is our actual simulated step response. I will call the second output as system output. Okay, so let's see this. And let's see the output. Here it is. Perfect. Next, let's plot the step response. I will call the function plotting function that I defined at the beginning of this tutorial. I specify the time array, the output array, I specify the title string, the string for the x-axis, for the y-axis, and the string for the file name. Here it is. Here's our step response. Next, let's learn how to simulate the system response for an arbitrary input. First, let's define a new time vector. I will call this time vector as time vector 2. We use the NumPy lean space. Now we will start from 0 and the 10, and in between we will have 200 steps. Let's define the input vector. I will define it like this input vector, and I will call it 2 is equal to numpy.sign. Over here, I will multiply two times time vector 2, and I will scale, that is, I will set the bias to my sign signal. For that purpose, I will type numpy once, that is, I will define a vector or array of once, and over here, I will write time vector 2 dot shape. Okay, so let's see our new input. Here it is. Let us plot our new input vector. Again, I'm calling the plotting function. I'm specifying the time vector 2, input vector 2, title string, string x-axis, string y-axis, and the string file name. Here it is. Perfect. Next, we need to define an initial state for our simulation. Let's denote this initial state by x0. x0 is equal to numpy array. Since the transfer function has the order of 2, 
the initial state will be a vector with two rows and a single column. And let's select arbitrary values for the first state, for example, minus 0 0.4, and for the second one, 0 0.1. Perfect. To compute the response of the system to our sign signal, we will use the function ct.forcedResponse. And over here, we need to specify the transfer function as the first argument, then we need to specify the time vector for the simulation, then we need to specify the input vector, and finally we need to specify the initial state. Similarly to the step response function, this function will return two arrays. The first array is the time used during the simulation. I will call this time, time return two. And the second output is actually the output of the simulation. I will call this output system output 2. Let's simulate the system. And finally, let's plot the result. Again, I'm calling the plotting function. I'm specifying time, output, and the title as well as the x-axis, y-axis label, and the string file name. Here it is. This is the response of the system to the sign signal. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.